Diana, we, we had thought the House might accept the Senate funding bill, averting a, show, a shutdown of the government uh, and move their fight with the president over to raising the debt ceiling in a few weeks. But that's not necessarily the case right now. What's the latest? Just as uh, has happened so many times in the past weeks and months and, frankly, even years, House Republican <laughs> leaders tried to uh, kind of manage their rest of caucus and were unsuccessful at doing it. There were hope uh, a couple of days ago was to say, you know what, don't fight on this one, guys. Let's fight on the next one, which is just around the corner, the debt ceiling. And they said no, in part, uh, I'm told, because uh, they were being egged on by Senator Ted Cruz saying you've got to fight on this government spending bill. So what's going on now is is John Boehner is effectively trying to negotiate within his own caucus, trying to figure out what the sweet spot is for them to be able to vote uh, and accept a spending bill that has some attachments. I'm told that it's not going to be clean. It's just that that's not going to happen. Probably will have some things dealing with Obamacare, maybe delaying it for a year, maybe uh, repealing the uh, medical device tax, maybe even getting rid of uh, what Sarah Palin lovingly called the death panels. Uh, it's not sure, we're not sure what it's going to be, but they're going to meet tomorrow to try to finalize it. Candy, uh, you know, this, uh, you, you'd think in a situation like this, uh, so close to a government shutdown, there will be some back-channel negotiations going on between the White House and the Speaker. Uh, other so-called adults would be uh, involved to make sure there isn't a government shutdown. What are you hearing? That, that nothing is going on behind the scenes in terms of, okay, here's plan D. If this whole thing explodes and it's, you know, the clock is about to strike midnight, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I hear nothing about uh, cross-party uh, negotiations to avert this. So, I mean, I will say I have seen in the past uh, that Congress will pass a one-day uh, CR or a two-day CR, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's still possible. But at, at the moment, there does not seem to be any kind of, here's, here's our plan that we go to when all else fails. In the old days, and you remember this, David, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, they'd get together and uh, they'd fight and fight, but then they'd make a deal. Uh, do you see the president and the speaker right now doing anything along those lines? Not quite yet, uh, Wolf, but I think they will before it's over. <laughs> for, for starters, Wolf, isn't it interesting, it's, it's, it's an illustration of how upside down the world has become, that a president at the podium today was speaking so warmly of our form, of our enemies, like Iran and in the past days about Russia, and speaking so harshly about people across the aisle uh, in his own country. I mean, that's really where our politics has come to, and it's very, very unfortunate. I think what Candy's saying, what Dana's saying, is that we're very likely to have a shutdown early next week or maybe a, a brief postponement. But I must say, from my perspective, that a shutdown may be in a, a good thing, that it could be shock therapy when we need it, because the real issue is not the shutdown. The real issue is whether we can get things resolved before the debt ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I think if we have some shock therapy, that Wall Street is going to come in like gangbusters and put pressure on to get a resolution. You know, there's going to be real pressure because you could have a financial meltdown if we have a debt ceiling, uh, you know, breached. And uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure from back home. And at that point, I think that maybe John Boehner and the president, the president taking the lead, I think he has the opportunity to negotiate, as he said he is willing to, over the shutdown questions, physical issues relating to the shutdown. I think that negotiation is possible. They got to do something in order to a avert yeah. a shutdown. But as you're right, and Candy, it's a potential uh, U.S. bailing out of its financial obligations, raising the credit worthiness of the dollar in the U.S. Uh, the U.S. economy, if you will. The ramifications of that are even much more enormous. So, so we are told by economists as well as by the White House, and I think. In some ways, the president, despite his saying, I am not going to negotiate over this debt ceiling, this is money already spent, there are no negotiations, just raise the debt ceiling so the U.S. can continue to borrow money. But then they go on, White House officials go on to delineate all the horrible things that would happen, and it would derail the economy and it would upset the world, you know, other world economies, et cetera, et cetera. So it is hard to believe that having raised those stakes so high, um, that the president would say, well, you know, I'm still not going to deal with them. So I, I think that there's more of a possibility for negotiations um, there because I think everybody agrees they don't really want to know what would happen if the debt ceiling was not raised. All right, so, Dana, what happens uh, this weekend, Monday, leading to that midnight uh, deadline Monday night? 
Well, what happens tomorrow is uh, the House will come in. Republicans will meet at noon to try to figure out and finalize what their game plan is uh, on their spending bill, what they're going to add to it. Uh, unclear if they're going to vote tomorrow, meaning Saturday or Sunday. The, the Senate is gone. They're not planning on coming in until Monday. They might come in earlier if they have to, but they're not coming in until Monday, which is really just hours before the the, uh, the shutdown deadline. It is possible, very possible, as Candy pointed out, that if they are down to the wire, they could pass a one, two day, even a week long stopgap measure. But there doesn't seem an appetite right now to do it. We'll see what happens when the clock strikes midnight. But one other quick point I want to make about the debt ceiling, which is much more important economically, perhaps, but when it comes to those those core conservatives in the House, that is the issue that they really care most about philosophically, because many of them were elected on a promise to do away or at least chip away at the nation's debt. Well, for them to vote in any way to raise the debt ceiling, meaning allowing the government to borrow more money from their perspective, is anathema. So that is why it is so much harder uh, to, to convince them. And they are incredibly small, maybe, but incredibly powerful, as we've seen, as we have seen so many times over all the right, past what a potential, weeks. What a potential nightmare unfolding here in Washington. Uh, all right, Dana Bash, Candy Crowley, David Gergen, guys, thanks very much.